Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amit. Today we are going to answer this question. How do you debug your SSIS package? First of all, when your package failed, that's where you need to get some kind of notification. So my advice to you is always build your packages with some kind of notification uh, part of that. So maybe you want to create a um, uh, e error email notification on e event handler in SSIS package uh, when it fails it sends you an email with error code and error information the other way you can also uh, in the SQL server agent job you can uh, have notification set uh, on failure that way you will get the error message uh, uh, from the job itself so once you get the message okay my package failed in production so what what is the next step or what is what, what you will do to debug your SSIS package so there are multiple scenarios where multiple errors or types of error can happen in SSIS package maybe it is a just a hardware hardware failure or at the time when the server was not available maybe you are reading the files from some folder and the folder uh, was not available because of network issue so the, by looking at uh, your message error message you can decide or at least you can get some idea what exactly went wrong so read the error message a couple of times before you jump in and start debugging so now maybe the very first thing uh, if it is uh, because uh, the folder is not available or um, uh, your SQL server connection failed or Oracle uh, server connection failed so you need to take a look and ask uh, your DBS uh, uh, if they can take a more detailed look uh, on the logs uh, and see if the network was not uh, uh, available during that time or uh, SQL server uh, services uh, uh, failed um, maybe it, it server was up but uh, um, due to the network uh, the package was not able to make connection and they just need to rerun the package uh, instead of you start debugging but uh, let's consider this scenario the package really failed and uh, the error you get uh, it was uh, related to your primary key violation so once you take a look it means uh, there is a some record coming from the source uh, and your package is trying to put uh, in destination but there is a primary key so it cannot put duplicate records so that's why you get that error primary key violation so th there could be other possibilities uh, where you get that error from the drive column let's say it truncated some uh, records uh, and uh, or it was trying to convert uh, some uh, data type for the source uh, um, data to the uh, towards the destination or the output and it was not able to convert that uh, data point to the required data type and the drive column failed so those all uh, errors uh, you can de take a detailed look and then jump into the package take the latest copy of the SSIS package that is running in the production system or in any environment where you are running that package take the copy and uh, bring that uh, copy to your uh, solution and uh, open in one of the uh, project uh, that's SSIS project uh, and paste it here so you will uh, able to take a look now once uh, you have the SSIS package here there could be multiple data flow tasks uh, or uh, execute SQL task uh, or other tasks uh, they will be used uh, in this uh, package so first of all uh, you need to take a look which uh, task failed so maybe it failed on the first task or maybe it failed on the second task uh, remember I have uh, made a video on uh, why naming convention is so important so that's how you will know which uh, data flow or executes equal task or for each loop failed so always give a proper name to your data flow or any tasks uh, uh, that you are using in the package even connection managers uh, that, that's the quick way to debug your SSIS package now we got to know okay this was uh, the data flow that failed so we what we can do we can di maybe disable the first uh, data flow and other data flow tasks uh, and uh, start uh, debugging now in this case uh, we might need the real data and it the package failed in production and uh, we can't really uh, do much without the data if we don't have it so maybe we ask the DBS to refresh the data in UAT or some environment from where we can read that data and try to replicate or create the error and solve it now once you disable these 
tasks uh, maybe this task is depending uh, on this one so we ha we can't really disable all of them so you have to understand your package before uh, start debugging um, in this case let's say it failed on the drive column conversion and here what we can do maybe we can introduce uh, data viewer before the drive column and then uh, we can uh, have uh, one uh, data viewer after that and if the data conversion failed we might want to redirect the rows here and uh, introduce a new data viewer we can we don't want to fail the component uh, instead of we will redirect the rows so we can take a look apply and okay now here we can put the another data viewer so we can see the redirected rows coming from the drive column we can also redirect the rows from the destination as well um, but that's kind of lengthy process uh, i will make a demo on that one how to redirect the rows from the uh, destination for the debugging but you can uh, eventually um, uh, redirect the rows from the destination that's uh, also one way you can uh, take a look uh, which records cannot be inserted and they are redirected and they was creating the problem if you even cannot let's say you are not interested to redirect when you run your package you can go to the output window and then uh, output window will tell you the details about the error and here you can find that information and you have more visual where exactly your package is failing so you uh, data viewers are very important you can implement them on different uh, uh, between different transformations and uh, take a look uh, and it will give you a visual data what is the uh, before and after that transformation now one other thing uh, we we are using some connection managers and variable values and we are not sure if the variable value is saved correctly and that could be the issue as well so we can use uh, the breakpoints uh, and then uh, we can use the on execution uh, on pre execution or post execution and we can see the values of uh, those variables uh, before and after that task complete so maybe we are saving some val value of a variable in the we are reading from a table or maybe uh, from um, uh, expressions and we have written that one and same in that value into variable by using execute SQL task so we want to know what was the value of a variable before uh, the tasks just started so we can do on pre execution event and then we can have a, a breakpoint as well just uh, before it complete so we can, we will be able to read the value before and after it wrote to the variable so we can use the breakpoints as well uh, one thing uh, i would like to tell you always uh, create the package with the logging so uh, you have a uh, logging um, different type of logging is available in ssis you can have a text file xml um, and sql server and uh, uh, different other types of uh, logging uh, I recommend uh, when you create your package uh, enable the logging uh, on different uh, events uh, for different tasks uh, so you can capture that information such as on error and on failure are very important uh, when it comes to debugging so um, first when you get the email maybe it is a short email you get your package failed the very first point uh, where you can go and start de uh, looking uh, for uh, before even you start debugging uh, is uh, to read the log and uh, understand what exactly happened or uh, which task failed or why it failed so everybody has its uh, own uh, way to do debugging uh, but uh, for me i will say i will take the look in the in the logs uh, uh, any error message that came from the sql server agent job uh, or the email notification and try to understand that and uh, if it is because of the network issue or the sql server connection manager or anything I will try to work with the DBS and solve it and rerun the package. If it is a data issue, I will bring the package to the environment, refresh the database from production and try to replicate or create the same error and then work on that one. Sometime your package is running fine, but data is not cor loaded correctly. So that could be a logic issue as well. So once you have the data 
uh, exact data in from the production you can run your package and stop at different points uh, and uh, uh, take a look in the business logic you have implemented by using different transformations uh, and understand that and uh, uh, talk with the business user and provide them maybe there are scenarios you never covered in the uh, initial development and those uh, the, the, you are getting the data um, with the passage of time uh, and those business logics are not working for that data so that's another type of uh, debugging you have to do it and come up uh, with those uh, data uh, uh, soft data issues uh, or uh, the nearly data issues uh, and you have to communicate with business users thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video